Man, I don't give a fuck about a motherfucking pole. I'ma pull up with that stick and hit your motherfucking dog, man. This is a Lamborghini Aventador SV. It is the most absurd, craziest looking, fastest Lamborghini of all time. And today, I'm going to review it. Now, in this review, I'm gonna show you around the Aventador SV, and then I'm gonna take it out on the street and tell you what it's like to drive this ridiculous concoction on public roads. And for more of my thoughts on that, you can click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. Now, before I do all that, here's something insane. The Aventador SV starts at $494,000, and that is before options, and there are many options. This one, was listed at $535,000. Do you have any idea what you could buy with $535,000? This six bedroom house in Iowa on 18 acres. So what exactly makes the Aventador SV cool enough for a half million dollar price tag? Well, let's start with the obvious. To make the SV, Lamborghini took the regular Aventador and decided 690 horsepower wasn't enough. So this one has 740. The SV also lost 110 pounds and gained some crazy styling touches. The result is 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds and a top speed of nearly 220 miles per hour. But what about its weird quirks? One of the most interesting is the door handles. How do you open the doors on a car with scissor doors? Well, the door handle itself is located on the door sill. You push the top part, you pull the latch, and then you push the door open with your shoulder or with your arm. And when it's time to close it, you pull the little red loop they put in in order to save weight for the SV model. Here's another interesting quirk most Aventador owners probably don't even know about. Because Lamborghini is afraid that your car will be stolen and loaded up onto a flatbed, there's a button you have to press before you tow it to let the car know that it's going into tow mode. If you don't push the button and you try to tow it, the alarm goes off to let everybody know that it's being illegally taken. The center control stack in this car is quite interesting. For one thing, that's where you'll find the start button. Flip up this little red thing, press start like you're starting a fighter jet. One thing you won't find in the center control stack is the CD player, and that's not because this car doesn't have one. Instead, it's because it's located down here where your knee goes when you're driving the car, probably in order to save some space in the middle. Another interesting thing about the interior is there is absolutely no storage space anywhere. Now, this won't surprise people who have spent a lot of time in exotic cars, but it's extreme in this case. The center console doesn't open, it's just there. There are no pockets in the doors because when you put them up, your stuff would fly out. There isn't even a little cubby in the center stack. Instead, the only storage you have inside the cabin is this little tiny thing that can barely hold a phone in the passenger footwell and a few nets behind the seats. Not that it's easy to get to these little nets behind the seats because, well, these seats are very different from your seats in your normal everyday car. For one thing, they're all one piece, so you can't exactly fold the back forward. Instead, if you want to move them, it comes as a whole unit. <laughs> More importantly, they're really, really tight. So when you sit in the car, it feels like you're being hugged by carbon fiber. So you're probably thinking, at least there's a lot of space up front in the trunk, right? Eh, not exactly. Unlatch the trunk from inside the car, open it, and you'll discover that this is all there is. Now, one of the things you'll notice about the front of this car is that it's tremendously low to the ground, and that means you won't always clear stuff. But Lamborghini knows you're not always gonna be driving this thing on a racetrack where everything's smooth, so they fitted it with a front axle lifting system. I'm serious, push a little button inside the car and the front axle lifts up to clear whatever obstacle you need it to clear. Once you've cleared whatever you're trying to clear, press the button again and the car goes right back down. Another cool thing about the Aventador is the rear turn signals. Check that out. It points the direction you're gonna turn. It looks a lot cooler than a turn signal on your normal everyday family. Another incredibly cool thing about this car is this gauge cluster. Tell me this is not the coolest gauge cluster you've ever seen. And if you don't think it is, well, check it out now. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, interestingly, while most other modern exotics have a reconfigurable center gauge cluster, in this thing, you are just looking at the tachometer so you can focus on driving. The only reconfigurable portion is down here, where you can change between telephone, auxiliary, and a few of the gauges. 
And speaking of the center display area, check this out. This is a G meter that shows your maximum Gs in every single direction. This is exactly the kind of center screen you expect to find in a seriously track focused car. Now beyond all the crazy quirks of this car, there are two things I especially notice as I walk around it and check it out. Number one, the crazy options. And number two, the incredible attention to detail. We'll start with the crazy options. I have here the original window sticker to this car, which shows an original MSRP of $534,809. I'm gonna read you a few of my favorite things from this window sticker. Number one, on a one to 10 scale of fuel economy, this car gets a one. It also says that compared to the average new vehicle over five years, you'll spend $10,000 more in fuel costs, but the options are the most interesting thing. There's a tiny little fire extinguisher in the passenger footwell. That thing, $800. The rear air intakes are finished in carbon fiber. They look beautiful. But do they look $5,600 beautiful? This car is equipped with the travel package. I'm not sure what is involved in that, but I do know that it costs $1,100. The backup camera, standard on a Toyota RAV4. In this car, $2,100. You could buy an entire used Mazda Miata for that. And then there's my favorite option. On the rear fender, it says SV in giant decals, but they're just black with a little cutout. I can make that in my basement. Lamborghini will charge you $2,800 for the privilege of having those decals installed at the factory. In the end, this car has almost $50,000 in options in addition to its $490,000 base price. And once you've added all the options, you're still not done. The gas guzzler tax charged by the federal government because this thing gets 13 miles per gallon in combined driving, that would be $3,700. And Lamborghini's destination charge to bring it from Italy here, $3,495 for a total price once again of 534,809. The other interesting thing I noticed about this car is its incredible attention to detail. When you got inside a Countach or a Diablo, you kind of got the feeling that Lamborghini just cobbled everything together and just hoped for the best. That is not the situation in this car. Check out, for example, the gas cap. This is something no one's ever going to see, and yet, look at this thing. This is not exactly an everyday, regular gas cap you find in a normal automobile. This little panel inside the driver's footwell that no one's ever going to notice definitely doesn't have to say SV on it, and yet it does. That's pretty impressive. And speaking of the driver's footwell, take a look at the floor. Those designs, perfect copies of the Aventador's taillights. Here's another incredible example of this car's attention to detail. The battery tender, which is placed in this little shoe box you'll find inside the front trunk with the Lamborghini logo beautifully embossed on it, is finished in carbon fiber look. This is the kind of thing you'll never, ever, ever see. Your passengers will never notice and you'll never experience while you're driving the car. And yet, Lamborghini went to the trouble to make it look that way anyway, just to be cool. Another excellent detail about this car, Lamborghini prints the firing order of the cylinders on the engine. They've done this for years and they absolutely don't have to. If you're a mechanic, you just consult the manual to find out what the firing order is. And most Lamborghini owners probably have no idea that it's even back there, but back there it is, printed on a beautiful little plaque on top of the engine for the few people who know to look for it there. Okay, so the Aventador is a crazy car with crazy styling and crazy features and a crazy price tag. In fact, it's so expensive that I absolutely should not be driving it on the road. And so, right now, I'm going to take it out on the road. Here in the Washington, D.C. area, where this car comes to me, courtesy of a viewer named Paul, who's on YouTube as Blue Whiskey. I strongly suggest you subscribe to Paul's channel because, well, the man has an Aventador SV. Do you need any other reason? We're doing this in Virginia, where we'll get arrested for even thinking about speeding. speeding. Much, yeah. The thing you notice instantly is just a Lamborghini, more than any other car I've driven, feel just bizarrely exotic. Even in a Ferrari, you can still feel like a fairly normal experience. There's nowhere you can look in this car where it doesn't feel completely insane. There's a guy with an S2000. I bet he thought he was pretty cool when he got in his car this morning. Man, 
listen to that noise. Woo! The transmission, the one thing, the one knock on this car is and will always be a transmission just isn't as fast as like a dual clutch like they have in the 458 and the Huracan. It does give the car more of sort of a mechanical feel. You definitely feel like you're doing something a little bit more, but at the same time, it could. we know that it could be quicker shifting. so fast you can feel this is not the light little car that the Huracan was this thing actually has some weight to it I feel like the stakes are a lot higher than the Huracan with this car I know that it's bigger I know that it's wider faster all that stuff much more powerful it also is more insane looking and of course it's more expensive if this is like a Huracan completely on steroids The turning radius is nowhere near as bad as Lamborghinis of old. Like the Countach, that'd be like a nine point turn. God, it's just so weird to drive this around normal cars. I mean, I just passed an Acura RSX and I'm looking up at him like he's driving an SUV. With that said, the driving experience isn't like so insane that no one could manage it. I feel like I could put a normal person in this car and they'd be able to figure it out with a little bit of a tutorial about how to use the paddles. It's not so crazy that you're like sitting in this cramped space and you can't see anything. You could, in theory, drive this car fairly frequently. You know, old Lamborghinis, you had to really work with an insane clutch and deal with the gated shifter and the ergonomics were terrible and you couldn't see anything. This one, you don't make any crazy compromises, but you are acutely aware of what you're driving at all times. But I think that's kind of cool. The ride is, the ride is harsh. <laughs> it's definitely harsh. Not a lot of cars, you feel the lane lines when you're going over them, but you do in this one. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can legitimately feel the paint. Listen, feel that. It's crazy. You can feel the paint on the road when you go over it. I mean, these bumps, it's like, this is the car you have to commit to. You have to be seriously, seriously committed to. Everybody notices. It's incredible. These people in this Altima are just like pointing like crazy. Get out the camera phone. Yep. They're gonna take that one vertically. Okay. I got three cars back and they're in. It's an Altima, a CRV, and a Camry. These are not car people cars. People freak out. People just absolutely freak out. I've driven a lot of cars where people freak out too, but this is insane. Everybody notices and look. When someone doesn't look at this car, it's like kind of an event. It's like, whoa, that guy didn't notice. What's his deal? What's he thinking about? It's interesting because car people like to pretend that everybody notices their car. They're like, people are like, oh, I got my BRZ and you see how many looks I'm getting. And it's like, you're not getting any looks. But this thing, like nothing I've ever driven before, not even on a similar level that I've ever driven before. stable. Woo! <laughs> okay, here we go. We got a little more space. Oh my god, it's just so fast. And now at normal speed on the highway, it's just stable. You still feel bumps. You feel bumps more than in any other car. However, the car is pretty stable. If I take my hand off the wheel, it doesn't track in any one direction. It doesn't tramline based on the road. Uh, it goes dead straight like a German car would which is kind of nice. There's some German influence in this thing that's not necessarily a bad thing. Man, there is just no zero body roll. The, the drawback is the bad ride. The, the benefit is incredible suspension that is just, <laughs> just ready for absolutely any corner. I can see myself getting lulled into being like, oh, I know what I'm doing in this thing, and then one day you come around a corner and you know, you're like on the local beach. So that's everything you need to know about the Lamborghini Aventador SV. It justifies its half million dollar price tag because it's one of the most ridiculous cars I've ever driven and frankly one of the most ridiculous cars I've ever seen. It has insane styling, it has crazy power. Just look at it, it's the most Lamborghini of Lamborghinis. You cannot possibly be around this car or in this car and not be having fun. Yes, it is expensive, but admit it. You would much rather have this thing than that six bedroom house in Iowa. I don't give a fuck up about a motherfucking pole. I'm a puller with that stick and hit your motherfucking dough. Man, I don't 
give a fuck about a motherfucking hoe. I'ma pull up with that stick and hit your motherfucking soul.